Hello everyone, this is Jay Kalpana here. In this video, we are going to solve a differential equation from higher order linear differential equations with variable coefficients. So let's get going. Problem. Solve x squared d squared minus xd plus 4 into y equals to x squared sine of log x. So we are given variable coefficients in our problem and we are given a Cauchy's equation directly. So we are going to solve this Cauchy's equation. Given Cauchy's equation x squared d squared minus xd plus 4 into y equals to x squared sine of log x. Now we are going to reduce this differential equation having variable equations to a differential equation with constant coefficients. Simply by making a substitution x equals to e power z then log x equals to z for x greater than 0 and theta is theta by z let then x theta equals to sorry x d equals to theta x square d square equals to theta of theta minus 1. Here, theta is a differential operator whose independent variable is z. Okay. Now, let's replace x squared d squared by theta of theta minus 1 and xd by theta. And replace x by e power z and log x by z. Then the above equation becomes theta of theta minus 1 minus theta plus 4 into y equals to replace x by e power z. Then we'll get e power z whole square into sine of replace log x by z okay we'll get theta square minus theta minus theta plus 4 into y equals to e power 2z into sine z then this equation becomes theta square minus theta minus theta is minus 2 theta plus 4 into y equals to e power 2z into sine z which is an operator form. f of theta into y equals to some function of z. Okay. Where f of theta equals to theta square minus 2 theta plus 4. Now we need to find the general solution to the given equation which is given by y equals to yc plus yp. Now let's find yc and yp. The auxiliary equation is f of m equals to 0 where f of m equals to, we have f of theta, theta square minus 2 theta plus 4. Let's replace differential operator by m. So that will get f of m equals to m square minus 2m plus 4. Now our auxiliary equation becomes m square minus 2m plus 4 equals to 0. Let's find roots to this equation using quartic formula minus b plus r minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2a. Okay. Let's find ABC using quartic equation in M. A equals to just compare these two, we'll get quotient of M square A equals to 1, quotient of M B equals to minus 2, and C equals to 2. Now we replace this value in the formula. Okay, we are going to replace all these values in this formula. Then we'll get minus of minus 2 plus r minus square root of minus 2 whole square minus 4 into 1 into 4 by 2 into 1. Then m becomes minus of minus 2 is 2 plus r minus square root of 2 square 4 minus 4 fours are 16 by 2. This equals to 2 plus r minus square root of 4 minus 16 is minus 12 by 2. So we can write minus 12 as minus 4 into 3 
by 2 is equal to 2 plus or minus. Now split minus 4 and 3 as minus 1 into 4 into 3. I will split square root of minus 1 into 4 into 3 as square root of minus 1 into square root of 4 into square root of 3 by 2. This equals to 2 plus r minus. We know that square root of minus 1 is i and square root of 4 is 2. Then we will get i. 2 into root 3 by 2. Now take 2 common from the terms of numerator. We will get 2 times. 1 plus or minus i into root 3 by 2. Here 2 gets cancelled and we will get 1 plus or minus i root 3. A pair of complex conjugate roots. Therefore, the roots are complex. We know that a plus ib is a complex number, then its conjugate is a minus ib. And if a minus ib is a complex number, its conjugate is a plus ib, right? So, we will call a plus or minus ib as complex conjugate roots. When m equals to a plus or minus ib, that means if we have complex conjugate roots, then yc looks like e power a into independent variable into one constant cos b z plus c to sine b z. Now let's write our complementary function. y c equals to e power a for a equals to 1 into z constant cos b root 3 into z plus c to sine root 3 into z. This equals to e power z into c1 cos root 3 into z plus c2 sine root 3 into z. Okay. Now let's write this in terms of x. Replace e power z by x and z by log x to the base e. Then yc becomes x into c1 cos root 3 into log x to the base e. Okay. Plus c2 sine root 3 into log x to the base e. So these are required yc. Now let's find yp. Particular integral. We'll find IP using 1 by f of theta and 2 RHS part. Okay. This equals to 1 by f of theta. We have theta square minus 2 theta plus 4 and RHS is e power 2z sin z. See this is of 1 by f of theta into e power az into v form. We will shift e power az towards left by replacing theta with theta plus a and later we will operate v with 1 by f of theta plus a. Okay. Now compare e power 2z with e power az then for a equals to 2 we will find theta plus a which is equal to theta plus 2. Shift e power 2x to Sorry, 2z towards left by replacing theta with theta plus 2. We will get theta plus 2 whole square minus 2 into theta plus 2 plus 4 into sine z. Then yp becomes e power 2z into 1 by theta square. Expand theta plus 2 whole square. This theta square plus 2 theta plus 4, okay, 4 theta, right, minus 2 theta, minus 2 to the 4, plus 4 into sine z. Here, minus 4 plus 4 gets cancelled and we'll get e power 2z into 1 by 
theta square plus 4z minus 2, sorry, plus 4 theta minus 2 theta is plus 2 theta plus 4 into sin z. This is of 1 by some function of theta into sin bx form, sorry, bz form. Here z is the independent variable, right? So now, we need to find theta square, which is given by minus of a square, sorry, b square. We'll get minus of, just compare sin z with sin bz, then for b equals to 1, we'll get b square is 1 square, which is equals to minus 1. So we'll get theta square equals to minus 1. Now, we need to check the denominator by replacing theta square by minus 1. Always remember that the denominator must be non-zero. If the denominator becomes 0, the total term becomes 1 by 0 into sine z. Since 1 by 0 is undefined, so total term becomes undefined, right? So, the denominator must be non-zero. Let's check what happens if we replace d square, sorry, theta square by minus 1 in the denominator. I'll take the denominator part, theta square plus 2 theta plus 4, and I'll replace theta square by minus 1, then I'll get 2 theta plus 4 minus 1 is plus 3. A non-zero term, right? So, let's replace theta square by minus 1 in the denominator. Then we'll get e power z, sorry, e power 2z into 1 by minus 1 plus 2 theta plus 4 into sine z is equals to e power 2z into 1 by 2 theta plus 3 into sine z. yp becomes e power 2z into 1 by 2 theta plus 3 into In the denominator we are having 2 theta plus 3 right. Now replace plus by minus then we will get 2 minus theta sorry, 2 theta minus 3, multiply and divide 2 theta minus 3 to this fraction, okay, into sine z. Then y becomes e power 2z into 1 into 2 theta minus 3 is 2 theta minus 3 by 2 theta plus 3 into 2 theta minus 3 into sine z. is equals to e power 2z into 2 theta minus 3 by the denominator is of a plus b into a minus b form so we can write it as 2 theta whole square minus 3 square into sine z which is equals to e power 2z into 2 theta minus 3 by 2 theta whole square is 4 theta square minus 9 into sine z again theta square appears in the denominator so what we have to do we have to check what happens if we replace d square by minus 1 in the denominator? The denominator must be non-zero. So, let's see. What happens if we replace theta square in the denominator? Replace theta square by minus 1. We we'll get minus 4, minus 9, which is minus 13. Non-zero number, right? Since we got non-zero number by replacing theta square by minus 1 in the denominator, so let's replace theta square by minus 1 in the denominator. Then yp becomes e power 2z into 2 theta minus 3 by 4 into replace theta square by minus 1. We we'll get 4 into minus 1 minus 9 into sine z is equals to e power 2z by sorry e power 2z into 2 theta minus 3 by minus 4 minus 9 sine z which is equals to e power 2z into 2 theta minus 3 by minus 13 into sine z. Then this becomes e power 2z into, we'll split this fraction as 1 by minus 13 into 2 theta minus 3 into sine z is equals to e power 2z into, we can write 1 by minus 13 as minus 1 by 13 into 2 theta sine z minus 3 sine z. Since we know that theta is a differential operator with independent variable z, then we can write theta as d by dz. 
Okay, then this becomes minus e power 2z by 13 into 2 into d by dz of sin z minus 3 sin z. Then yp becomes minus e power 2z by 13 into 2. Derivative of sin z with respect to z is cos z minus 3 sin z. Now let's write this in terms of x so that we need to replace e power z by x and z by log x to the base e. Okay. In order to replace e power z by x we need to write e power 2z as e power z whole square. Okay. By 13 into 2 cos z minus 3 sin z. Now we'll replace. We'll get minus x square by 13. We have replaced e, play, e power z by x into 2 cos. We have z right. Replace it with log x to the base e. Minus 3 sin log x to the base e. So this is our required yp. We got yc and yp. Let's write the general solution. The general solution is given by y equals to yc plus yp. Then y equals to we have yc. x into c1 cos root 3 log x base e plus c2 sin root 3 log x to the base e. And yp is minus x square by 13 into 2 cos log x to the base e minus 3 sine log x to the base e. This completes the problem. So we have seen a problem from higher order linear differential equations with variable equations in this video. Hope you will understand. We will see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.